Welcome to our home in Sydney, and thank you to those of you joining us online. Just about a year ago, at our high-velocity event in London, we pledged to help our customers cut through BSM, or bad service management, so your teams could come together to deliver great experiences at high velocity. What is bad service management? Have you ever seen those late-night pharma infomercials with the infinite scroll of side effects at the end? Those side effects sound a lot like what happens with bad service management. In fact, many of you told us you struggled with bloated budgets. You often ended up with features and modules you'd never use, or paying armies of consultants millions of dollars year after year. Blurred vision. Disconnected workflows and tools meant limited insights to improve service delivery. Irritable teammates. The very same disconnected tools and practices resulted in friction between dev, ops, and business teams. You told us that very often trying to set up even the simplest of service desks was migraine-inducing. And once you had these service desks up and running, the experiences weren't that great, and so your employees avoided them like the plague. And yes, very, very dark. As your organizations continue to grow, your ITSM solution has to keep pace with the growth in the number of employees, agents, and assets. Otherwise, it quickly becomes shelfware. Bloated budgets, blurred vision, dev IT disconnects, complex onboarding, outdated experiences and solutions that just don't scale. Sound familiar? Well, that's why we built Jira Service Management. We believe you've got to be able to bring your development, infrastructure, and operations, and business teams together on the same platform so together they can deliver what's absolutely impossible alone great experiences at high velocity. Why is this so much more important right now? Now more than ever, you've got to build and ship digital products and services really fast, and that means your dev and ops teams have to be in sync. And as remote work becomes more and more prevalent, IT has to empower pretty much every team, HR, facilities, finance, and beyond, with the ability to deliver great support to every other employee without a huge reliance on them. Why not traditional service management? Traditional ITSM is focused on that central command and control approach, and that often results in friction, which ultimately gets in the way of delivering great service. At that last one, we've taken a different approach. We've invested in capabilities that bring your dev and business teams and give them the, together and give them the, give them the autonomy to run fast and do their very best work while ensuring that work is aligned with IT and doesn't introduce risk to the business. That's our secret sauce. And that's what's gotten industry analysts like Gartner and Forrester to sit up and take notice as well, and why nearly 50,000 customers trust Jira Service Management today. So thank you to all of you. Speaking of customers, when we launched our fairly crazy NBSM Now initiative just about a year ago, we were floored by how many customers wrote in to share their experiences with legacy ITSM. That was a year ago. How much difference can a year make? We're still getting thousands of letters, but this time it's from customers who've made the switch to Jira Service Management and have transformed their lives and let's just say, pretty wild and extraordinary ways. All right, to tell us a bit more about this, let's hear from our co-founder and co-CEO, Scott Farquhar. Hi, everybody. As many of you know, last year we set out on a mission to rid the world of BSM. In the time since, we've helped thousands of customers around the world switch to Jira service management. Without BSM slowing them down, teams are free to work better together and deliver exceptional service experiences. They're so grateful, we actually get lots of fan mail. Dear Scott, budgets have been so balanced. JSM has made us so efficient. Jira service management has made our team bond so strongly. We all got matching nose piercings and chained them together and now we're all very scared to sneeze. 
love the product. Keep it up. Dear Atlassian HQ, the different teams in our office are working so well together that we feel invincible. Yesterday we cheered each other on, seeing who could bench the vending machine over their head. Cheryl shattered her pelvis and we had to stop. But it was great to see what we could accomplish together. Ever since we started using Jira Service Management, our dev, IT and business teams have been so connected, almost like too connected, if you think about it. Sometimes I'm like, should I know what Ryan from HR's hair smells like? <laughs> JSM has given my team the belief we can do anything, so we started conducting seances to raise the dead in the hopes of starting the first ever Netherworld Fight Club. What have I done? Jira Service Management has made us so efficient that I'm 75 years ahead of schedule. So I decided to cryo-freeze my head in order to come back in the distant future when I'll have something to do. That's crazy. <laughs> back in a moment. We certainly appreciate all of your colourful enthusiasm for Jira Service Management. If you're watching and you'd like to get rid of BSM at your organisation, Head on over to nbsmnow.com and make the switch today. Happy servicing, everyone. I really need to get someone to do this for me. All right, jokes aside, how are customers benefiting from switching to Jira Service Management? I'm super excited that in just a little bit, Scott's going to be joined by some really special guests from Domino's and the NRMA to talk about how they're embracing technology to reimagine the future of service. But before that, to step you through all our recent innovations that I hope will help you tackle bad service management, please join me in welcoming my good friend, Edwin, to the stage. Thanks, Amita. It's so good to be here with all of you today in my hometown of Sydney. Now, in the next few minutes, I'm going to step you through all the recent innovations that we've shipped to help you eradicate bad service management. First up, how we can help you get rid of the bloat and become a fit and healthy operation. Now clearly, this bloat problem is rampant today. According to Gartner, eight out of every 10 enterprise overspend on the ITSM by 50% of the contract budget. 50%, it's pretty big. Now this doesn't actually surprise us because when we talk to our customers who have switched to Jira Service Management from their legacy tooling, they have been telling us that they've saved costs of up to 60% by cutting down on big license costs, expensive additional modules, administration and configuration costs, as well as hefty renewal fees. Forrester Consulting also did a study where they found that on average, when customers switched to Jira Service Management, they gained return on, benefit, return on investments of up to 277%. Accrued $4.2 million of benefits in three years, with the average deployment times of only four months and a payback period in under six. So you can see how we are really helping organizations cut out all that bloat and get healthy. Now let me dig into some product innovations, cool things that we are really doing to help you go from blurred vision to rich insights so that you can make better decisions. Let's start with your developers. Pretty much everything these days are powered by software, right? Well, software isn't just one big piece of code that you write. It's now made up of lots of components, microservices, that are created by lots of development teams, usually spread around the world. And as a developer, you need to answer questions like, hey, how do I find this microservice? Who owns it? How do I get help on it if something goes wrong? How do I know if it's secure or compliant? Answering these types of questions is what excites me about Atlassian's latest addition to our family, Compass. Compass, first and foremost, is a software catalog that you need in every organization to answer the types of questions that I just asked. It helps you tame the sprawl of services. 
Secondly, it's a DevOps monitoring tool that helps you monitor your components so that you can quickly react when things go off track. And lastly, it's an extensibility engine. It's built on top of Forge, which is Atlassian's developer ecosystem platform. So your developers can customize the workflow to the, to the way that they like to work. Let's take a look at an example of Compass in action. Let's say here that you're a development team owning this transaction service for an application in a bank. In Compass, you can see all the associated repositories, documentations, and dashboards related to the service. You can also see the health of the components through dashboards and metrics and scorecards that really tell you what's going on. You can also see who's on call and who to contact when something goes wrong. So as a development team, you get complete visibility of everything about the service, so you really know what, where to go when, when you need to do something with the service. Now, this is great for your developers, but what about your IT teams? Those who need to operationally handle the service for incidents and for change, how do they get that same level of visibility? Let's flip over to the IT view for a change manager. He, too, gets complete visibility of that same service in Jira Service Management. As he assesses this change, he can drill into the service and see all the upstream and downstream dependencies. In this case, he's going to pause on approving this change because he's noticed that a dependent service, which is a database, is having an active incident on it right now. So as you can see, it's the same service for dev and ops with information that is important to both of them in their use case. I think this is an absolute game changer. You see, traditional CMDBs have always been used as the single source of truth for application and services data for IT teams. But keeping it up to date and making sure that it has the right information has always been a massive challenge. This is especially the case in a software-driven world where we have more and more developers who are constantly updating these services. So your traditional CMDB really only ever gave you half the picture. Our approach is to help you complete the picture, combining Compass with Jira Service Management. You now get all the things you need to see a full picture of your service, information, on your critical infrastructure, as well as the information from your development tools on engineering components. So far, I've only focused on the digital products and services that are critical assets for your company. But increasingly, we realize that our customers are being asked to account for all assets that are critical to a business, from teammates to tractors. Making good decisions whether it's around making changes, responding to incidents, ensuring security or compliance, tracking inventory, billing, or forecasting and planning for the future all require a fuller and more accurate picture of these critical assets. What you need is a comprehensive asset management approach. Now, to achieve this, you need really broad coverage of good quality data. This is why I'm super, super excited to announce that AirTrack has joined the Alassian family. <laughs> now, being a fellow Aussie company has made it all the more special on this particular occasion. AirTrack helps enterprises aggregate and analyze multiple sources of truth, making it easier to pinpoint issues and remediate them. It helps customers get to that elusive single source of truth by continually monitoring the environment and ensuring that asset data is correct, current, and complete. So what does AirTrack do? First, it comes with over 30 out-of-the-box connectors that helps companies improve coverage and quality without forcing you to use one single discovery tool as the single source of truth. Right? It's very easy to spin up additional custom connectors as well 
to get to different sources of data. Then it helps with data reconciliation. So for example, it can help you with identifying missing dependencies between your services, which is kind of critical if you're dealing with an incident. Or it could discover machines that are not managed by your endpoint management solutions, which could lead to vulnerabilities that are not patched. Third, it tracks data that's outside of IT, helping address the challenges of security, compliance, inventory, billing, forecasting, and more. Now, with this comprehensive picture of your assets, I think it's going to make a huge difference to your operational teams every day. But with this data, of course you want to do more. You want to see the big picture, identify trends, see problems, find opportunities. This brings me to another big announcement, one that I think many of you have been eagerly waiting for, which is asset dashboards, allowing you to create reports on your asset information. It's available today in our early access program, so if you are interested, please visit our team members on the booth floor behind us, and um, we can tell you more about it. With this new asset dashboard, you now have complete visibility over your assets. You can create reports and filter them by schemas and objects that allow you to have meaningful insights and help you make better decisions. And all of this works out of the box with no coding required. And the best part about all this is that all this asset data, all this information, is also available in Atlassian Analytics. What this means is that you can now combine your asset data with other data from other Atlassian tools, as well as third-party tools, so you get complete visibility across your whole enterprise. For example, you can have cloud operations data coming from AWS, like your actual costs plotted against budget information that's coming from Snowflake. And all of this mapped to the assets that are now in your Jira Service Management database. In one spot, you have all the information you need about your service, your costs, and your performance. So I've stepped through how we can help your teams go from blurred vision to rich insights. Now, let's dig into our recent investments to help you get rid of those DevOps disconnects, silos, irritable teammates, and go to, hopefully, more harmonious, happier teammates. Now, we've seen these challenges play out in organizations every day. You have development, on the one hand side, who is very eager to run fast and deliver incremental value. On the other, you have operating teams that are really trying to minimize risk for the business. What you want are for them to work seamlessly together, autonomous developers on one hand side, aligned operations on the other. Now, how can we help you achieve that? Well, let's go through an example of how we can roll out some changes. And of course, these typically start with developers making changes in code. Now, one of the first investments that we've made is the DevSecOps tools integration with Jira software, which allows you to better manage risk. This new integration will let you see all your vulnerabilities affecting your sprint. You can also set up automation rules that allow you to make sure there's a task created in Jira software for every vulnerability identified. This way, you can ensure that you're not going to ship before addressing all those vulnerabilities. Now let's step forward a little bit in time. The devs are done. Code is ready to, to deploy. Jira Service Management integrates with all the popular CI CD tools like Bitbucket, GitHub, GitLab, Jenkins, Circle CI, Octopus Deploy, so that a change request will automatically be created in Jira Service Management without your dev teams needing to do anything outside of the tools they use every day. And in Jira Service Management, the risk of that change can then be assessed and managed. Low risk changes are automatically deployed. Medium risk changes are made to soak in a staging environment. And in a set period of time, if no incidents happen or no bad things happen, it can also be automatically approved and deployed. 
As for high-risk changes, these will get routed to the right team for approval and review before they get deployed to production. With this integration, your dev teams can track the progress of all the changes that are go out, going out in the release, right from the new release hub in Jira software. And when a change is approved for rollout, it's updated right here. And the relevant team members are notified. Now, when we think about happy teammates, it's increasingly apparent that it's not just dev and ops that we need to think about in this equation. As more organizations depend on digital services for their external customers, we're seeing a third team that's also very important within this relationship, your customer support teams. Now, traditionally, customer support teams operated in their own little silos with different systems. And what this meant was that they really had little visibility of the very services that they are responsible to their customers for. Right? Devs also lacked visibility into what customers really want. And operations rarely had appreciation for the customer impact of operational issues. For digital companies, we believe that the only way you can deliver great, exceptional service is by connecting these teams together. We think that Jira Service Management can complete this vision by bringing all these three teams onto the same platform. Let me now drill in to look at all the cool innovations we've shipped to support the customer support use case for our new customer support template. Now, with this template, you can view all the details of the customer that you're helping out in a ticket. And you can also look across the customer organization to see the contact details, the license entitlements, the contacts that are inside the organization, as well as any recent activity, including tickets that they have been raised, the complaints that they have been filed. On top of this, we've improved the collaboration between your development teams and your support teams by creating an escalation process that takes your support tickets and allow you to seamlessly escalate them into bugs in Jira software. For your developers, they get to quickly see the customer impact of the bugs that they're working on. And for your support teams, they can see all the tickets that have been escalated to your dev teams requiring attention in one place. On top of this, I'm super, announced, super excited to announce one additional improvement. Single sign-on for your customer accounts. That's right. You can now connect Jira Service Management to a separate single sign-on provider for all your customer accounts so they can seamlessly log in and file their support tickets. So we've just walked through how easy it is now for devs, ops, and support teams to work together. No more silos and irritable teammates. Now let's talk about how we are reducing setup complexity. These days, we're seeing all kinds of different teams use service desks. And to get you started, we've shipped a whole bunch of different pre-built service management templates. All of this at no extra charge, by the way. These templates for teams like finance, marketing, design, HR, and sales all come with the most common used request forms and workflows pre-configured for you. And I think it's a pretty good start for many, many teams. But at some stage, you want to have more control on how these service desks work. Well, we've got that covered too, with some pretty new major enhancements on the way you configure any service desk. This is the new configuration experience that we've shipped, which allows any user to start easily and tailor the service desk experience that they want to give. You start the process by picking the actual requests that you want to support. And there's a whole library of the different types of requests you can use right out of the box. You can choose to tweak these or keep the defaults that we've picked for you based on the usage patterns of thousands of our customers using these every day. Next step, you choose the workflow that you want these requests to follow through. You lock in your choices. And just like that, you've tailored your service desk up and running for the whole company. 
This experience gives each team much more control over their own configuration. And it saves you time going to that central admin, asking for things, going back and forth. Ultimately, this means more autonomy for your teams, yet still achieving that simple aligned experiences for all your employees. So you've just seen how easy it is now for any team to quickly and autonomously set up a service desk. Onto my personal favorite area, how we're making the lives of everyone better every day through delightful experiences for agents and employees. Starting with one of the most often requested features that I've heard from many of you, which is a board view of your tickets to help you visualize and prioritize those requests. The same tickets that you see in your queue now visualized in the board with all the drag and drop controls that you are all very, very familiar with. We've also shipped another popular feature, dark mode. I'm happy to share that all Jira service management screens now come with dark mode. So for those of you up late at night looking at tickets, responding to incidents, I'm pretty sure you're going to love this one. Now, amazing experiences comes from new way of doing things. And earlier this year, we've announced our investments into AI with Atlassian Intelligence. I personally think it's an absolute game changer, how we can take away the boring, the repetitive, and sometimes mundane work and redefine that service experience for every organization. Let's start with our virtual agents. Today, we are making our virtual agent general, generally available in Jira service management. This is a massive step up on how you can enable intelligent service at scale. Let's take a look at how it works. Let's take an example here of, uh, you know, you're doing a bit of traveling overseas and you need physical access to another office facility in your company. So you ask the virtual agent this question, and the virtual agent is able to figure out what, what you're trying to do, or you're trying to get access to this different office. And it asks additional question to narrow down the choices that you have. In this case, it's pretty simple. It's just listing me the different choices of offices that I could be visiting, and I choose, say, London. But just like that, I can now be automatically provisioned. And it even gives me a handy link to the um, travel guide as well, which is, which is pretty neat. Now, what's cool with this very simple example is that the workflow you saw here is actually defined by you using a simple no-code interface. So based on the intent of each of the requests that are coming in, you can now define the exact path that the request will go through. The cool thing about this is that we've ensured our virtual agents, unlike many others out in the market, are really built for self-serve setup. So you can be up and running serving customers in a matter of hours, not days, weeks, or months. Let's now take another look at an example of AI in action, Agent Copilot. I'm super excited to share that we are rolling out our Agent Copilot features soon powered by Atlassian Intelligence. Now, how often have you experienced bad service as a customer or an employee when your ticket is handed from one agent to another on a different shift. It's pretty bad, right? In globally distributed organizations, we're seeing this happen all the time. For the agent that's picking up that ticket that's coming in, it's a pretty daunting, daunting task to figure out, hey, what, what's happened so far, what's been tried? But for you as a customer or an employee, it's even more frustrating with lots and back and forth, with conversations that you've already had. It just feels like the whole thing is going backwards. Atlassian Intelligence has a soul for this. With the click of a button, your agents can now get a very concise summary of all that's happened so far. Atlassian Intelligence can also help your agents craft better messages. Often, how well we actually deal with incidents or responses really come down to how well you communicate with your customers. Are the instructions actually clear? Are they professional? Do they sound empathetic? 
Atlassian Intelligence can quickly rewrite messages for you with greater clarity and context to reduce any potential confusion. It can also get the tone just right, so it sounds appropriate to what you are trying to actually do here. Now, all the examples I've shown so far, I think, are barely scratching the surface of what the future of service could really look like with AI. Over time, I believe AI will fundamentally redefine how all this works, the whole idea of service management. Let me now share with you in the next few minutes our vision of what that future could be. We believe the future of uh, service is going to be increasingly digital, distributed, and diverse. And for the average employee, there's going to be an increasing number of services that they're going to be relying on in order to get their work done. More different technologies, different systems, and more teams that they need to collaborate with. In short, there's going to be more need for help between teams in any organization than ever before. And while I personally believe that Jira Service Management is amazing and can solve all the problems for all sorts of teams, we recognize the reality is that enterprises are incredibly diverse. And you rarely have one system of truth. Usually there are multiple different service desks, lots of forms, different mailing lists, chat rooms, the list goes on and on and on. So rather than trying to be the one system that provides all the help and have all the answers, we want to get you to where you need to go. Our vision is to unify help. It centers around building an experience that coordinates the routing and resolution of requests, regardless of where the work actually happens to get that solved. Leveraging the power of AI, our vision of service is one that understands you, regardless of how you ask that question and how many Aussie colloquiums you can throw in there. It's interconnected to all the various systems across your organization. And it can extract information from those systems to give you a quick, concise answer like a real human being would. It curates answers from those different systems so you don't have to go around and piece it together yourself. And it recognizes that for some requests and some questions, the best answer may still be with people and teams who can help you solve this. So, learning from every interaction, it knows the right subject matter experts in different areas, and it will intelligently connect you to the right person or the team to talk to, and start that conversation right away. So I've shown you how we're improving service experiences and shared our vision of how AI can disrupt the future of service in every organization. Now, to ensure that we are delivering on that future, you'll first need a scalable platform that grows with the needs of your growing enterprise, which leads me to our final remedy for bad service, man service management, building healthy, flourishing, scalable deployments. Today, we're extending our focus with some pretty exciting new additions, including a new upper limit for the, of 20,000 agents for any instance of Jira service management. We're increasing the object limit in our asset and configuration database to 3 million objects. We're also expanding our regional support for data residency, with Canada being our latest addition. And alongside the single sign-on support that I mentioned earlier for your external customer accounts, we're also enabling you to specify a custom domain for your help center. All these additions really underscore our commitment to ensure that Jura service management scales and grows with every one of our customers. We've just seen how you can tackle and hopefully eradicate bad service management symptom by symptom. But I've saved the best for last. And there's nothing better than hearing directly from our customers about how they have successfully transformed the way they deliver service. Here, to sit down with leaders from Domino's and the NRMA, please give it up for our co-founder and co-CEO, Scott Farquhar.
G'day everyone, how are you doing? We've had these events all over the world, uh, meeting with our customers, and this is the first time in many years we've had one of these big events in Sydney. And I really pushed hard to make sure that we could have this event here because it's so nice to be here on home turf with people that have supported us for a long time, who speak with a funny accent uh, and uh, you know, can, can really be here with our home, uh, home crowd. And we've got a lot of Atlassians here today as well. Because we're here in Sydney, we could bring a lot of our team uh, around. So I want to make sure that you get a chance to spend time with them. Uh, as you know, I get a lot of letters uh, talking about Atlassian. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, but it's even better to see you all here in person. So thank you for coming down, getting on a bus if you've come uh, from Sydney, a train, taxi, cab, whatever it was to get here. I, we really appreciate it. We've got a huge day in store for you uh, with a lot of exciting things and a lot of time to spend with each other. Uh, we are going to, oh, actually before I get into our, uh, our guest today, I just want to wait, the, everyone went through a whole bunch of stuff we've got, but there are two things I wanted to point out that I'm really excited to buy. Um, one is Compass, is a product that went uh, general availability only in this last month. Uh, it used to be that developers would do a couple of things in a day. Developers would basically look at Jira tickets, they'd open up their integrated development environment, they'd write code, and then builds would fail and they'd have to fix them. And that was kind of like a developer's day, at least my, my day when I started Atlassian. These days, developers' days are so much more complicated than that. You've got security you need to care about. You have microservices you need to integrate with. You've got service level obligations. There's a whole bunch of stuff that as a developer you need to understand. And there is a sprawl of all the tools you need to use to get your job done. And uh, we internally built a whole bunch of tools to solve this for us. Uh, and that evolved into Compass, uh, which is a product that we are super excited to share with you. Um, so please go out and check uh, out Compass. Like I think it really will solve a whole bunch of problems. It's uh, actually an emerging space, so uh, it does like 10 different things for you and sort of help us uh, evolve that product uh, in conjunction with you. So firstly, go check out Compass. Uh, the second thing, as I get really excited by, is the concept that Edwin showed, which is the idea uh, that help in your organization should be a great experience, and getting help should be a great experience. So uh, by show of hands, in the last week, so let me make it nine days, last week and yesterday, uh, who had to get help from another team in their organization? All right, so it's about 70% of you and 30% are lying. OK, so <laughs> the, if you think about that, Getting some help from in your own team is, is great, but sometimes you go, oh, I need a contract reviewed. I've never had to do that before. Where do I go? Oh, well, so-and-so plays golf with someone in the legal team. Maybe they'll know where, where I get to go to do that review. Or let me go to Slack and let me randomly search channels for like the person I might be able to find. Oh, there's something about legal channel. Let me randomly ask a question there. Or there's an email address, or there's a confluence page I can go to. But I dream of a world where whenever you want help from another team, that is a seamless, mediated, amazing experience, both for you asking for it and for you as a person who has to provide uh, help to you know, the rest of the organization. And so that's the vision. And we've got a lot of the pieces uh, at the moment. And we're building it out. And with AI, we can do some really exciting things uh, there as well. So again, share us your vision for that. That also means using our products beyond just IT. Start using it for legal, for HR, for anywhere in your organization that you need to get help. Please roll our products out there. And you'll start seeing that experience get better and better. So that's super excited about products. Also super excited to have two, uh, amazing of our, uh, two of our amazing customers uh, here on stage today. And uh, both of these customers, in my mind, are mission critical life-saving services. Uh, one of them I used a lot earlier in my career. Uh, this is NRMA. For those of you who uh, live in New South Wales, you know what it is. NRMA is when you break down on the side of the road, the car would get, you know, your car would get fixed, uh, and you'd call them up, and uh, they would turn up, and they generally it's your battery that was flat, but they would, you know, turn up and, and fix your fix your car. Uh, so early in my life, that was a life-saving uh, experience, and they've gone on and, and do a whole much more things than that. Now that I'm a bit older in, in life and I'm not driving cars that break down as, as, as much as the, they used to, um, I'm now realizing the life-saving services of our second customer. Um, I have three young children. And uh, on a su Sunday afternoon, when they uh, really just need some food and they won't have anything else, uh, Domino's is what I call. And uh, no matter how much I've tried them to eat my food, food I want to cook, no, it's like Domino's or nothing else. And, uh, and so we're going to hear about that. So I'd like to invite to the stage uh, Matthias and Andy uh, from Domino's and NRMA, please.
Welcome, welcome. And uh, we're going to start quickly. I want to ask you to uh, share an anecdote about each other's company. We'll do something different. So, uh, Andy, do you want to tell us an anecdote about uh, Domino's? Sure. Um, so, a little while ago, uh, I was at a housewarming party and we were having some fun and we got hungry. So, we decided to order some pizza from Domino's. And um, what we, are, we suggested was that could the delivery agent do it in the theme of Queen, we will rock you. So, uh, deliveries ar arrived on time, delivery agent arrived, and on the door there was a knock, knock, clap, knock, knock, clap. Knock, knock, clap, and so, yep, we give him a big round of applause, open the door, and uh, let him in with all the pizzas, and then had a great time. So, that's what happened to us. That's awesome. Um, and, and Matthias, you want to tell us a story? Yeah, uh, we have uh, everything we do is designed to be delivered, as, as you know, and so road safety for especially our young employees who delivered is really important to us, so NMA has done some great work starting at kindergarten age to teach people about road safety. Um, so that's something we like, yeah. NRMA is teaching kids about road safety. Yeah. Ah, oh, fantastic. Um, let's do it the other way around. Let's uh, tell, tell something about your own company that the audience may not, may not realise. Um, and uh, we spent some time together, both of your companies, like I, ha I had a bit of an idea about what you did, but actually the, the truth is way more exciting. So uh, Matthias, you start first. What, what do we not know about Domino's? Uh, we are not just in Australia, we are 12 markets, 3, over 3,800 stores in Europe, ANZ and Southeast Asia. And in the last financial year, we cooked eight pizzas per second on average, if you take the 256 million pizzas we sold. Um, so P -P PPS, pizzas per, per second. second. Yeah. So an average of eight metric PPS. Metric eaten at less than, yeah. uh, what, what is peak PPS? <laughs> Because that's what I mean. We're in software, right? Peak is the more important the, the peak number is, here. Yeah, so Friday evening or Saturday evening is yeah, probably 100 times peak PPS or 1,000 times, yeah. I, I heard that uh, game day is actually the biggest day of pizza delivery. In, like. in Australia, it's yeah, yeah, being in New South Wales, so it's yeah, state of origin. It's uh, the main event. In Japan, we, have over, we just opened our 1,000th store in Japan. In Japan, it's actually Christmas. It's a, you know, it's American pizza, Domino's branding, and it's an American Christmas tradition to have pizza, or so people were led to believe, and okay. they enjoy that. Yeah. It's like Santa Claus with Coca-Cola, like Domino's have just created an American pizza tradition. I like it. Yeah. Um, any other uh, interesting anecdotes? Uh, delivery, yeah, you get it in half an hour. If you're up on Mount Fuji, we had one delivery last year which took six hours, but the pizza was delivered to the top of the mountain by one of our Japanese colleagues, so... Can you drive to the top of Mount Fuji? No, you have to walk. That's why it took so long, yeah. Probably, <laughs> probably was a bit cold, but yeah. It was a bit cold, okay. Yeah. Um, Andy, what about you? Uh, tell me about NRMA. Uh, humble beginnings, uh, 1920 we started, so we celebrated 100 years in 2020. Um, but since then, we've grown, obviously, into many diverse different businesses um, covering roadside, as was on our core business. Um, but now also vehicle rental uh, with Sixth, um, holiday parks across the, across the country, um, and uh, tourism. And our recent, most recent acquisition is Energy, where we're building a backhaul for Australia for uh, quick charging for EVs. But um, one of the things that we also run is marine. Um, we've got boats that run across the ferry, and maybe some of you have bought, caught some of those recently. Um, and we also employ little robots, little physical robots, that um, uh, we noticed that the, the cost of fuel was spiralling, getting out of control, as we all know, and um, so it was the boats running was costing quite a bit. So what we did is employ these little robots. Um, uh, I wasn't involved in the interview process for these robots, but um, yeah, they got the job. And uh, what they do now for us is, and when, they, when the boats are moored, they clean the hulls of the ships um, away from barnacles and uh, make the boats travel more, more fluid through the water. And we've seen a 20% drop in um, fuel costs based on that. Oh, wow. That's pretty impressive. Um, we're we'll, we'll continuing the technology theme. Uh, Matthias, if you think about, you know, quick service restaurants, you, you go back, or I go back, and it was the only place uh, was the local pizza place or the local Italian restaurant or takeaway Thai, which, you know, is still a favourite of mine. 
And these days, like our expectations for what you know food looks like have changed. Like, these days, I don't want to you know leave my bedroom. I just open my phone, flip to an app, often multiple apps out there, and, and order whatever I want. Can you talk me through the technology that's involved, like and how it's had to evolve and change for, for Domino's? And I think you guys have been a beneficiary of that. Like you've been an early adopter of a lot of technology, and if it helps. Even just the technology from the moment I opened my app, uh, you know, to the moment a pizza arrived. If you can walk me through, kind of, what does that look like? Because okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it starts with the app which we, had, we developed uh, internally and with my team. Um, and over half of all orders in Australia are placed on the app. It's more like 90% of orders are placed online. Uh, from the app, we check with the store. We need to make sure that the ingredients are available. I heard your sons are not fans of olives, but if they were, we couldn't offer the pizza with olives if they had run out of stock, which obviously we try to avoid, but sometimes that can happen. Uh, so we talk to the store systems, and in the store, the whole kitchen is, is run by humans, but controlled by computers, which tell you what the ingredients are and which order they are. We actually have machine learning running, which looks at how likely you are to order that pizza even before you press the checkout button. And so we can inform the store and say there's a, what we call a future order coming up, and they can see it on the screen and prepare it already. And then we cook it, uh, and the drivers then have a GPS application, which basically tracks, tells you when your pizza will be arriving, should be roughly yeah, in under half an hour. And then at the door also you get a geofence, so we notify you with SMS or phone call saying the driver is near. So. You know, when I order pizza, my kids are a bit older, though the youngest is only 13, and I've got five of them, so they can get hungry or hangry quite quickly. Uh, so it's important that the pizza arrives on time, but also you want to know, you know, do I need to get that kid out of the bathtub? Or so knowing a minute before somebody is at the door that they are coming is really helpful. So we try to optimize this better for the customer and better for us because less time waiting at the door for the driver as well to deliver the pizza. I was, I was thinking about that. You have 3,800 stores, five to 10 people in every store you know, that would make pizza. And so I was just thinking about that, that on any given day, there's 15,000 people making, you know, plus, making pizza inside a Domino's store. And yet every pizza has to come out basically exactly the same uh, you know, that you, as the one before and in the same time frame and the same level of quality and everything like that. How do you ensure consistency at such scale across so many geographies? Like, what do you do there? So the pizzas differ between the markets. So if you can hear from a subtle accent, I'm originally from Germany. And here, there, they, you sell more pizzas if you put broccoli on them, which probably doesn't work so well in Australia based on the pizzas we sell here. But you're right, within the market, you need to make sure it's consistent. Yeah, people might not have been doing this for so long. So you can run visual AI, which basically compares the pizza to a machine learning model from perfectly cooked pizzas and warns you if there's a wrong pizza, yeah, wrong ingredient on it, or if it's not cooked quite right or not enough pepperoni, things like that. It's this is really important to me because, like, if I go to a pizza place that's not Domino's and I order margarita pizza and it comes with those little specks of green things on it, my kids will not will not eat it at all. And uh, and so, like, if if you know, I think you were telling me earlier that if I order a pizza, ham and cheese pizza, and someone accidentally knocks some olives on it or they happen to come, you know, f fall out, your system will detect that the wrong ingredients are on the pizza. Yeah, the pizza checker will call that out. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Um, and uh, Andy, tell me about the technologies you've had to do. Like, it's, you know, your Domino's been around for a while, but NRMA is a 100-year-old company. Uh, that's pretty, pretty crazy that you've had to evolve. And uh, a hugely trusted brand. You know, NRMA is H-E-L-P, if anyone's seen the ads, uh, over a you know, 20-year period. So talk about me about how you've evolved the technology and the strategies you'd use to keep up as a, as a company. Yeah, uh, it's been a journey. Um, in like in, in, for example, um, old switches we used to run. Um, I probably used to use pedals to make them work because they were so old. Um, but we've obviously moved away from that technology into something which is much more software-based, and JSM is one of those cloud technologies that we move towards. Um, with all the different businesses that we've brought on board and running, um, they obviously come with their own faculties and their own technologies. Um, 
just consolidating that infrastructure has been quite a journey for us as well. Um, and in terms of uh, technologies that we've used, um, I've been worried to say it because we used to call it Voldemort in, 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 um, in NRMA, but yeah, we used to use ServiceNow as our backbone ITSM platform. Uh, he who shall not be named. Um, but there we go, I've said it now. So if uh, you're in the crowd, I apologize. Um, but yeah, so we used to use ServiceNow. It was very much a, a kind of a bubble by itself. Um, but we've been using that Nassim product for some time in terms of CICD, which you talked about before, uh, pipelines and hooking into continuous delivery. Um, it never hooked into what we needed it to hook into to allow all our teams to talk um, seamlessly together. And so one of the things that we've done is look at all of those different platforms. Um, we had different ITSM platforms. We had uh, is it, uh, Zendesk as well coming in as well as one of our ITSM. We looked at all of those and consolidated, and uh, we've been able to plug JSM into all of our ways of working, our workflows, our communication, our team's dialogues uh, seamlessly in the last um, six months from previously uh, unable to do that. So that's the journey that we've been on, and what that does is it just brings not just the internal experience together, it reflects and mirrors externally as well. Um, obviously, we want to bring all of those journeys together from all of the different business units, um, and yeah, so that's changed the way we work, changed the way we communicate, changed the way work flows through the teams. And, and yes, just yesterday I was asking another team for help, so I did put my hand up. And uh, I want to come back to the, the, the specifics of, of how you, you switch things out as well, but I think people also need a sense of like, you know, RMA, you know, it's not just roadside assistance anymore, you've got all the different things that you do. But I think you were, you were telling me backstage that uh, you run like crisis playbooks and times and strategies. Like, walk me through kind of what a day in the life looks like. And uh, I, I thought it was fascinating the story about what you have to go through. Yeah, that was uh, very uh, interesting. So we we do run crisis playbooks. Uh, as you can imagine, we've got holiday parks dotted around in some of the most beautiful locations in Australia, um, but also in very deep bushland, some places. Um, and we've got uh, six locations also in various areas of the country. And so sometimes we run crisis playbooks. We've got holiday parks that um, also, you know, you've got to think of health and safety, pools, um, young children, lots of things to think about, but also bush. Um, and so we ran a crisis play playbook just thinking forward in terms of how we were seeing the, the, the change in weather conditions coming, coming through in a in future, future summer. Um, and we ran a crisis playbook of how to deal with bushfires, what would we do, how would we continue uh, serving members as well as dealing with a crisis. Um, that was about four weeks ago that we ran that crisis playbook. Um, quite intense. Um, obviously, you document and you kind of go through the playbook and, and try and do the best you can in, in a simulated scenario. Two weeks later, um, bushfire. So we had a bush, a real instance of a bushfire occurring in near Kempsey, Hathead, um, and wow. So just preparing for that in terms of what we did in crisis management certainly helped. Um, but when the shit hits the fan, you just got to do what you need to do, um, particularly when people's lives are put in danger. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was an interesting play and then a real scenario that came, came through a couple of weeks later. You have that sort of... This is not a drill. This is the real thing. This is not a drill. Like, you're taking people from doing planning, and then, like, the next day, they've got to do the whole thing for real again. It felt very simulated again, for one of another word. So, um, we've just done this, and now it's really happening. This is not a drill. Okay, please, uh, wake up, everyone. Let's go. <laughs> um, Matthias. You know, I want you to talk through the systems and processes and how you think about scaling, like, you know, sort of all those outcomes and technologies and tools. You've got to run across tens of thousands of people. I can't even put in my head what 3,800 stores look like. That's 3,800 leases that need to be negotiated. Like, you've got franchisees. Like, you know, how do you create kind of a single view across everything that happens? And I think you've had to do some consolidation and so forth. Just walk me through how you think about scaling that way. Yeah, so starting maybe on the engineering side, uh, maybe a bit anchored in, you know, when you want a pizza, you want it to arrive. So we I introduced the concept, we call it every order counts, where we basically 
look for anything happening in the online platform, happening in the stores. We have, we have three, over 3,800 stores. They all have two servers running in them, lots of software. Uh, and also we might get feedback from customers or otherwise about an order where there might be a problem. And so with Jira and especially with the plan feature, we, we have this every order counts label. And I have a weekly meeting across the team where we basically look after all these things which are not shiny new objects, but which might get in the way of delivering a pizza 100% of the time. And so the Jira software and then JSM and the integration has been instrumental to really have this end-to-end -end view on the technology side. And now obviously going into engineering with things like Compass. And then on the business side, what I first, that was sort of my plan as I introduced it, but what wasn't really my plan, but what was really encouraging is how we can now extend it into the business side. So, you know, we have, we have franchisees, so there's a lot of transactions you need to do as you buy a store, as you sell a store, as you bring a partner in. That's you know, lot many small businesses we are dealing with. And so even our legal team uses Jira Work Management to manage all these transactions. And now we can start to tie it in with assets into the flow of a new store is open, what are the legal workflows, what are the technical workflows. So it sort of started with every order counts and it's now developed into more of an end-to-end -end picture across the organization. And many high-performing teams have this sort of, you know, learn a loop that they do. I know when I get my pizza, it tells me how did I go and I give it a five-star rating, I can complain uh, or not. Is that sort of the input for your teams and then you take all of that to discover what technology solutions you need to change or, you know, kind of what does that, what does that review look like? Are you kind of looking at photos of damaged pizza and trying to work out how it, how it didn't arrive in, the, in time? Yeah, so we, we have a feedback team. We, we collect the feedback on the back of the order. Yeah, when you order tonight or tomorrow evening, make sure you give us the feedback and then we, we act on it and drive some new features in the, in the online platform. It drives maybe training programs in the store to, to improve certain aspects of it or better communication to the customer, uh, making sure that the GPS software is actually being used because that's when you get the benefit of the tracking. That's really the learning loop we have. And talk me through the journey you've been on. Uh, as far as I know, you've had to do a lot of consolidation from multiple systems. You did some acquisitions overseas. You had a lot of different systems out there. Can you talk me through um, that journey and kind of what the success has been and then how you made decisions around it? Like, walk me through, how, yeah. you know, why did you choose us? Uh, yeah, we started really on the engineering side because I've used you before, and you know, but I was impressed how far you have come since you moved to the cloud, so that's been uh, really impressive. So we had a different, so we standardized the engineering team on Jira, and so that was helpful, and I could do all this tagging and seeing everything going on. But then on the service desk side, you know, we had Zendesk in Europe, we had a different Zendesk here, another system in Japan, acquisitions, as you say, so I think when we counted, it was like six different systems. And while technically you can integrate them, it costs money to do, it costs money to maintain. So we have standardized on JSM and that has really given us this visibility. So when I talk about this plan where I can see for every, we run product-based development teams, so every product team, I can see what they're working on and how they prioritize the, yeah, not the new features, but more the stability and other topics we have to care about. I can also, in the same dashboard, I can, or tree, I can see the JSM tickets. And so if there's like a, an order gone wrong, that gets the same attention as some engineering, you know, DR learnings from the last DR exercise or something. And, and if you have to quantify that in any way, anecdotally or with dollars or anything like that, how do you justify it to your boss, uh, you know, this project? Because you could have continued on doing what you were doing previously. What, what, what do you tell them you need to optimize for? Well, I tell them we just have to do that and then that's, yeah. <laughs> I think that's, yeah, one of the, 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 the lovely things about Jira because it starts in the engineering space, which, or for us at least, which is a bit of a dark art for a lot of the executives. Uh, there's no discussion, yeah, if I say we need it, we need it. But then we have something in IT which we can show to the rest of the business what we can actually deliver yeah, give them enough rope. Uh, so that has been for me the surprise that I can leave it, uh, leverage it outside of engineering and show what is possible. Yeah. And, 
Andy, you talked about Voldemort, which I think is a fantastic uh, term. I'm going to use that uh, again. Um, <laughs> You also consolidated a whole bunch of different things and got rid of you know, uh, other products out there. What was it about our product that you chose us? You could have chosen a whole bunch of other, you know, you had a lot of things to choose from. What was it about our products that uh, made you choose us? Yeah, similar to Matthias, we were, we were using um, Jira and Confluence as our kind of workflow management, um, development, continuous delivery. I mentioned that before. but. Um, when we started looking at the options for us that were out there in terms of what platform should we go with, um, we had good knowledge of what Voldemort platform could do, um, but we didn't know how it worked. It was very much a, we can see it, but we can't touch it. And if we had to touch it, we had to get someone in to touch it for us. Um, and so the run costs were quite substantial and we had no in-house skill to run it. Um, and as well, whenever we wanted to manage workflows, it was always a, a terminal shift from one over here and then to over here to the Voldemort platform and then back to our normal everyday lives. Um, but when we looked at JSM, we could see how the integration and how it was API driven um, and how it would hook into how we communicate with big teams. We use teams quite significantly. Um, how we use Jira for our workflow. So all, it was ticking all the boxes. Um, and the ability to, to learn and skill up in the platform internally so we can actually play with it ourselves and build our own workflows without having to bring in um, the third parties that would then um, talk to Voldemort platform and et cetera, et cetera, and um, charge us a big bill. So being able to skill up in-house internally and build those workflows was a very, very important for us. Um, but also the run cost of the platforms, I mean, if I can say that we've reduced our run cost by half, um, um, for us was, is a significant reduction. Um, and then bring, looking after our own people, upskilling our own people and empowering them, um, that is one of the, the key, key things that we've seen come through in the last six months that we've been using it. So. And for both of you, is there an unusual use case you've used it for? It's kind of obvious, you know, the, the typical IT use cases out there. But sometimes I find, you know, once our products get deployed, there end up being very weird and wonderful ways that uh, these things get used. Is there anything that comes to mind uh, for either of you? Does it get used for ordering the CEO's pizza goes through JSM? I don't know, like, is there anything that comes to mind? The personal one is one day I got desperate and I created a Jira work management board to book meetings with me so my extended leadership team can put it in. I put them in priority order and then my secretary books them. So we have like a simple, and I could set it up myself. So that, that was good. Jira for booking meetings, okay. Yeah. It's a new vertical for us, yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we were playing around with it when we put it in and um, I think one of the, the members in my team, I'm actually in the crowd today, I think, just created this workflow that just spammed me um, for tickets. So I just have to keep approving, 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 approving. Um, complete troll of me and trying to keep me busy. Um, but yeah, but it was fun because it showed that those workflows can be created off the cuff and very quickly um, uh, to uh, allow workflows to work very well and, and just flow seamlessly. But yeah, um, we haven't f um, used it for booking meeting rooms or anything like that yet, but um, yeah. I will just remind you both with great power <laughs> comes great responsibility, okay? <laughs> How to use it. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit. Um, in terms of AI, it's a, it's a topic on everyone's uh, mind. Um, I'm reminded that it was only less than a year ago that uh, ChatGPT came on the scene and totally changed what all of our experiences is, is talking and interacting with computers. Um, Matthias, you go first, but like, w what are you excited about in AI? I know you've been using it in various forms for a long time. What have you done with it historically? What are you looking to do it? What's changed? How should people in the audience think about it? Yes, yeah, so I mentioned earlier the, the future order screen where we use machine learning and AI to predict the orders and, and optimize the flow. We have others, yeah, forecast models on how many pizzas per 15 minutes interval are likely to be ordered and consider weather, weather conditions and all that kind of stuff. I think because this is a, a JSM conference, uh, in this context, I was fortunate that we were on the beta of the Atlassian AI. Uh, I've got a PIR process in Confluence, uh, and 
there's like a monthly review meeting with me and then obviously they, they get resolved just uh, the day before the meeting. Uh, so suddenly I got eight PIRs to look through over the bad months, that months. Uh, and then I can just click summary and I have, it's for real, I've got this like five pages long PIR report and I've got five sentences summarizing it for me and then we track into, into JIRA tickets and they are again labeled with that label I mentioned earlier. So I could just get, remember what it was, scan down, make sure everything is how I want it and move on. Uh, we, we got a knowledge manager. He wrote to me the first week he used Atlassian AI, he saved 2.3 hours. Um, so that was in week one. Shows he's a bit of a geek to know. Also, that's a very German precision, right? I saved 2.3 hours, like two hours and 18 minutes uh, you were saved uh, this week from that, from that tour. I yeah, and I'm sure in week two it will be more than... <laughs> Anything working like forward, like even further into the future, like AI for what you're? How do you prevent cars breaking down uh, using AI? Like, you know, how, how to? How can you read my mind uh, and get my pizza to be delivered, or my kids' minds, probably more I more think, accurately? I think you've just ordered one that has egg on it. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> um, looking forward is always tough. I mean, you mentioned ChatGPT was launched just about a year ago. I think within a month it had a million users. Um, so. Uh, you know, to look beyond two or three years is always tough. Um, vehicle management is very important for us. We've got a sixth fleet. Um, we're slowly um, bringing some of those vehicles up to electrical standard. Um, how we use AI in that? Well, we're thinking, you know, personalization of customers when they book. Um, instead of going to a counter to pick up your car, you go straight to your car based on what you've done before, how you've booked, where you're going. Um, so there are things that we're still looking at um, in terms of AI for that fulfillment of services. Um, and then, uh, like I mentioned, holiday parks and many other things that we run. Um, and obviously our little robots that work in the harbour. Uh, switching back to our uh, solutions and how you've adopted that as we head towards the end here, why is it now is the right time to do this? You know, we could have done it five years ago, consolidated on tools, you could push it down, you know, another two or three years. You know, why is now the time that you've made this change for both of you, like, you know, to spend this effort consolidating and simplifying your workflows? Matthias. Yeah, okay. Um, the short answer is because we were ready for it. Yeah, we had done the engineering side, this was the next step. But it fits into a bigger picture. We have 100,000 yeah, employees, yeah, casual labor in, in these 3,800 stores. And what we are working on is bringing uh, chat to teams and so on to every worker. Yeah, everyone has a phone nowadays. If my kids are anything to go by, they live on the phone and they chat and they don't call. Uh, and so we're looking to integrate, now that we have JSM as a platform, to integrate that with virtual agent and, and, and other assist technologies into that so it becomes much more natural and uh, Everyone is empowered in the store and then a little bit with the AI overlay I sort of describe it as you get the work coming to you when you need it rather than you know, all the information is there But you have to look for customer feedback for this for that and we see in the future all the information coming to you Just in the right moment and that's where we see both JSM and then the, the overlay with AI coming together yeah. So it's just sort of the right time in terms of the features you're looking the experiences you're looking to build for your staff, like you needed a different platform to, to work Correct. with. Yeah. Andy, for you, why, why now? Yeah, we were ready for it. In fact, we were screaming for it. So we needed something that would bring us together. You think of the diverse, diverse business nature of us. We've got you know, head office, people went behind desks um, using ITSM. We've also got people on wharfs, people on frontline, people in holiday parks people in um, six retail locations that are walking around on mobiles um, that need access to something that can plug into our day-to-day -day workflow. Um, we didn't have that. It was an absolute gap that we had. And what we found is that JSM has plugged that gap completely, um, provided us a homo homo homogeneous workflow, when I get the word out, um, and to anyone who is either desktop, wharf, frontline, on mobile, walking around a holiday park. Right. Um, last question from me. Uh, there's a lot of people in the audience here who've turned up today, probably at an earlier stage of the journey of standardizing on our products. Uh, just for each of you, uh, and uh, Matthias will go first, like, 
What advice would you give people who are looking to embark on this journey of standardization halfway through? You know, was it easier, harder? What should they expect? What advice would you give people? Yeah, my, my advice would be to standardize on one platform. One thing I've, I've noticed in the last, probably since the pandemic, is there's lots of, and they are good SaaS platforms, you know, probably partly competitors of yours. The challenge is, especially for a business like ours, which needs to be commercial really sharp, is you then end up with a legal team using one of those tools, another team another, another country another tool, and I never have critical mass to actually support the business properly, and while you can technically integrate all those tools, it's a lot of work and needs to be maintained. So that was really the, the blessing almost with JSM, that I can use that platform. Got some of my team here, some of them spoke yesterday to your team, Scott. And I can afford to have experts like that to support the business, whether it's legal or health and safety or good old IT, and run on one platform and come to a much better outcome. So I would encourage everyone to stand firm and sometimes be a little bit the bad cop in the organization to standardize on a tool and, and get the maximum out of it. Right. Andy? Yeah, um, so we all love a great experience when we're browsing our digital channels and we, you know, we put uh, experience as key to staying on what we're browsing. Employee experience is also up there because a great employee experience also mirrors outwardly. And having something that can be uh, used by everyone seamlessly, plugs into our day-to-day -day workflow, just brings everyone much closer. And so having some single platform that can allow, give that to you was the main driver for us choosing JSM. And I would, I would recommend that, you know, if you're looking for something to consolidate, which we had, we had a proliferation, um, and you want to bring things together internally, and also potentially halve your costs, that's what we did, and that's how we, um, we approached it. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed hearing uh, the experiences here today. I want to say a huge thank you, Andy and Matthias, for coming up here. Please uh, give them a round of applause. Thanks for having me. Thank you.